are you waiting for? Hollywood vampires, the Q battery. To be a rock star, you have to have a certain swagger. You have to have a certain stage ego. You either have it or you don't have it. There are stories the are early seventies. It was exactly what you'd see in the movies. It was an ongoing party that never ended. There was a club in Hollywood called the Rainbow Bar and Grill, and it was sort of the rock and roll hangout for everybody. They would escort us upstairs, and the waitress at one point said, "All I ever see you guys is at night, and all you do is drink. You're like a bunch of vampires." We became the Hollywood Vampires Drinking Club. It was a private bar where they could all go and get completely shit faced. And spend all night long just being themselves. It had one single purpose: to get as drunk as possible. The biggest names in rock Harry and Nielsen roll. Was in there all the time. Keith Moon was a regular. At the Rainbow, in that room, those people just came by themselves, just to be themselves. There'd be a party that would go all night long. It was the most sort of out of this world scene. The first time I met Alice. Was actually on Dark Shadows. I have no recollection of puberty whatsoever. Because every day I was in my room with a vinyl, pulling the needle back and learning songs by ear and teaching myself how to play. Johnny is a guy whose love was of rock and roll first. I mean, that's what he wanted to do. Saying, I want to move to Los Angeles and start a band, that was his dream. That was his first love and passion. Acting became something because it was like he needed a job and he needed to work. I knew that my days in music at a certain point were gone, it was over. I never thought I could get back to it. When you get to be a big arena band, there's always this little thing in the back of your mind, it would be fun to go back into bars again and play covers. I was telling Johnny about this, and I mentioned it'd be great to put a little bar band together and just do songs for our dead drunk friends. Secretly, I was dreaming that Johnny Depp and Alice Cooper would get together and they would do a project. Because Aerosmith had been on a couple of breaks Joe had all this time. He said, man, that sounds cool. That's a cool bit, you know. And so then I immediately thought, Joe? Everybody showed up for that album. Paul McCartney, Dave Grohl, Robbie Krager. Everybody was on that album. I've got a smile from ear to ear. It's Paul fucking McCartney, for God's sake. The camaraderie between Alice and Johnny and me and Tommy and anybody else that entered the room was really, really great. Sounds like a fucking band? Yeah. It was a really fun day. Somebody said, maybe we should take this on the road. And we kind of looked at each other and said, you're fucking kidding me? <laughs> Rio de Janeiro was the coming out party. This is the biggest festival in the world. I was at the sound check. Alice and Joe both said, I don't think I've ever seen a stage this big. I was like, you haven't been on one this <laughs> Jesus. Man. That was such a high. It was the impetus to go forward and start booking an actual tour. Let's hear it for the Hollywood Vampires. This is going to be a serious band. It's not just a once in a while thing. They're going to go on and, and do this thing. This is no joke, man. This is real rock and roll danger at times, and I love it. So three, fuck it. One, two, three, fuck it. They get to play the songs they love with people they like, and they get to travel the world. People are now coming to see the Hollywood vampires. It's chaotic, and it's a lot of personalities, and it all comes together. Beautiful chaos. It's just crazy in the nature of itself that I am on the plane with Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, and Johnny Depp. The musicianship on stage is really something. Everybody in the band is at the top of their game. They're A-plus players. When you've got a bed like that to lay in, it's, it's pretty incredible. The 
involved with artists like Alice, Joe, Tommy, you know, all these guys, it's beyond an honor. I'm, um, I'm Geraldine. I'm, um, I'm the vicar. Hi. 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 And, um, and I'm a woman with women's needs. <laughs> um, I've just dropped by to give you this invitation to come to, uh, drinks at the Nickeridge. At, at the, um, at the Nockeridge. At the, at the vicarage tonight. That's very nice of you. Thank you. If you would like to come, it'd be happy. Heavenly. No, it'd be, be, uh, it'd be good to meet some of the local people. Listen, do you think um, it would be all right if I brought a few friends with me? Because we were going to go and have a party anyway. So maybe we could just bum some booze off you. Yeah, why not? I mean, anything, you know, to do with bums and, and you and me and bums. It, it, that's fine. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Well, thanks very much, honey, and uh, we'll see you uh, later. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Great talking to you. And you? Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Especially nice meeting you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. See you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Oh, my.